let's get into uh, binary real quick here. Let's get into subnetting of these TCP IP addresses. What an incredibly important topic for IC and D1. And I'll warn you right off the bat that this might be a topic that you do not get fully on your first pass. So this is a great example of a topic where you may go in and you may watch this video several times over with scratch paper in front of you. So if you've never seen subnetting before, this is definitely something that you might need to take a couple of attempts with. So we know and we've talked about how the computer is going to see our decimal representations of IP addresses in binary. So we look at decimal as humans and notice that the binary is what the actual computer is going to see. This is all based, by the way, as we'll see, on powers of two. So we're going to get really good at our powers of two calculation. Two raised to the zero being one. Do you remember that, by the way, from your elementary school mathematics? Anything raised to the zero power is going to be one. And then two raised to the one is that number itself. That's two. And then two raised to the two is four. And this keeps doubling as we go through. Now, it's really interesting. This particular chart right here, minus this middle column, I really don't care about that, but this particular chart of two raised to the zero power all the way to two raised to the seventh power, giving us these particular decimal values, this is something that I am going to use as a tool for quickly solving all of the subnetting problems. Pretty amazing. So we're going to use 2 raised to the 0 to 2 raised to the 7th, and these values of 1 to 128, okay? And we're going to use how they correlate with each other as a valuable tool for solving all of our subnetting questions. Does anyone have any questions on this particular chart? Does this make perfect sense? What we need to memorize here is 2 raised to the 0 is 1, and then we just memorize that it doubles from that point forward. 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 to the 2 is 4, 2 to the 3 is 8, 2 to the 4 is 16, 2 to the 5th is 32, 2 to the 6th is 64, and 2 to the 7th is 128. A very powerful mathematical uh, uh, relationship here that we want to memorize. And like I said, we'll end up building this chart on scratch paper to help us. Everybody all set with that? Any questions before we move on? Awesome. Let's move on then. Now, the first skill that we need to be able to carry out here is to take a decimal number and convert it to binary, okay? Take one of our decimal numbers in the IP address and convert it to binary. Let's take a look at that right now. So what we do is, notice we have our valuable chart. Yeah, there it is. And again, you can create this chart on your scratch paper when you're practicing, and you can create this chart on your scratch paper in your exam to help you out. Two to the seventh, 128, and it goes all the way through to two raised to the zero equaling one. So that's our chart that we make. Now the challenge here is to convert 35 in decimal to binary. Here's how easy it is to convert 35 in decimal to binary. We go to the first bit position and we ask ourselves this simple question. Can we subtract 
128 from our 35? The answer is, no, we cannot. So the first bit position in the eight bits that represent 35 is a zero. Everyone see that? The very first step, can we take 128 from the number we're trying to convert, 35, and the answer is no, we cannot, so there is a zero in that first position. Can we take 64 from this number we are attempting to convert? The answer, no, we cannot. Therefore, we have a zero in that next bit position. Can we take 32 from 35? The answer, yes, we can. So we have a one in that bit position. Look at that. And we know we have a remainder of three. We have subtracted 32 from 35. This gives us a remainder of three that we're going to try and work out with our remaining bit positions. Right now, the octet in binary looks like this, zero, zero, one. We have a remainder of three. Can we take 16 from three? The answer, no, we cannot. So we have a zero in this position. Can we take eight from the remainder of three? No, we cannot. So we have a zero in that bit position. Can we take four from three? No, we cannot. A zero in that position. And we can take two from three leaving us a remainder of one, and we subtract the one from that, giving us a one in that bit position, and notice we have solved it. 35 converted to binary is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Wow. So when we have 35 in an octet of an IP address in our standard dotted decimal notation, then that is seen by the computer as 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Pretty awesome. Now, when you're practicing, you can check your work. How do we check our work? Well, we check our work with the Windows calculator. Yeah, we check our work with the Windows calculator. Unfortunately, you don't have access to this calculator in the exam environment, but it's going to be a great tool to check your work when you're practicing. Go to View and choose Programmer. Yeah, go to this Programmer view. Uh, by the way, this is available in the Windows 7 calculator. If you've got like an earlier version of calculator, you could always go to the scientific calculator and use that. But the programmer calculator is all set up to think in binary and hexadecimal and all kinds of cool things for us. Now, what we do is we go, all right, set the thing to decimal and plug in 35. And right down here, you can see the uh, binary, can't you? And we came up with 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. So there it is. We can see these eight bits right here, and we can see that we did our mathematic perfectly, our mathematics perfectly. Awesome. So we just checked our work. Isn't that easy peasy? Any questions on converting from decimal to binary? All we need is our handy dandy conversion chart, and I will highlight that. We just need our handy dandy conversion chart shown here, and once we have that memorized and write that out, this conversion from decimal to binary is simple.